And welcome back to the hot lap. We are talking WRC Rally Poland and, well, super sub Calais Roven Pira. This time last week, he was thinking, I want to go on a jet ski. I think whilst holding some spark plugs whilst he got the call up for, for the uh, unfortunate accident that happened at Ogier. And then he gets in the car thinking, it's going to be quite difficult. We were even thinking, at most, a podium. And then, hey, the uh, current world champion just goes and wins it. There were two heroes, though, I think, at Poland. One of them was at Cali Raven Pira. The other one, I think, a certain Latvian. And we'll get into that in a second. So welcome to our WRC Poland winners and losers slash review. But before we get onto our full-on review, let's just have a quick look at the results before we do our winners. Excuse me, our winners and losers. So here is the results. And as you are, let's be fair, as you are probably more than aware, it very much is. Calais Rovenpira is, is the man. I mean... Super sub or what? In second, we had Evans finishing 28.3 seconds behind. Then it was Formo. Absolutely congratulations. Another podium for Adrian. One of the, I think, most improved drivers so far in 2024. New Valley is going to be really disappointed with that. Losing out to points against Evans, who is now back in second in the championship. But there we go. One of the heroes of the moment, I think, without hybrid, Martin Sesks. Oh, my Sesks. M Sport. I mean, brilliant. Uh, he, he beat Mickelson, who was actually doing, you know, at one point he wasn't doing too bad in the Hyundai. Seventh was Gregor Monster. Eighth was Katsuta. Really, yeah, I mean, disappointing with a capital D, I think, for Katsuta. What? What were, you, what were you thinking? I just I just don't get it at all. I just don't get it. I don't get it. It's just, oh, I was, I was hoping he needed, he, Katsuta, I think, and Evans needed a good, a good rally. Evans got a fairly solid rally. His uh, Japanese, his Japanese teammate, yeah, possibly not so, not so much, if I'm honest. And yeah, poor, poor Toyota. But let's get, I mean, let's get into it. Let's have a look then. At what's, well, this was perhaps one of the most impressive performances of the man, well, behind me on the green screen. Yes, it is, it is Calais' car. And like us, we didn't really give him a chance. I figured podium at best. But this young man is capable of doing just about anything in a rally car. No doubt you have to start thinking if he had a full-time campaign or even a two-thirds time campaign at this rate, he probably will be winning that championship. I mean, he turned up with absolutely zero preparation and to perform as well as both him and his co-driver did was an uh, almost a miracle, I think. This guy, I mean, what can't he do? He had uh, underperformed in some of the rallies for Toyota this year and despite this last minute circumstance, I guess it just fueled the adrenaline. Um, but yeah, I mean, can a Raven Pira? Where is he? Where is he on our WRC hot stage? Because I, I, need, I need to bow to you. You are the man of Toyota. He's like him and OJ are the number, are essentially the number ones. And then you've got Evans and Taka that may be unfairly. They seem to be like the number twos this year, even though they are both the main drivers. So, you know, you start to have to wonder what are Toyota doing? More cars, more cars, surely. Um, but yeah, uh, well done to Calais Raven Pira. Brilliant. Absolutely fantastic. Next up though, let's have a chat about a certain Welshman who we did say, I think, is the favourite to win the championship. Um, he is second. Is he the favourite now? I don't really know. But it was a return to form of sorts for Evans. Um, and encouragingly, he didn't feel... That reportedly, he wasn't feeling uncomfortable in the car. And he did, at most of the time, found find a pace that he was comfortable with. Although that wasn't a winning pace. It was, I think, reassuring because we did have massive question marks coming into podium. We said absolutely at minimum he needs, he needed a, uh, he needed a podium, and he did. He hasn't yet won a rally. We know he is fast on the gravel. We know he's brave, but um, yes, he's his precision is good. When it comes to the moment, though, when. Everything is on the line. Ball to the wall, so to speak. Is he going to be there? And that's the one big question mark still, I think, over Evans going into this championship. If it all came down to the last rally, the last stage, would he choke or would he not? That is the question. We uh, That is the question still, I think, hanging 
over Elvin Evans, and hopefully he will have he's matured enough to not to not do that. But he showed his pace, and he had the potential to win this event. It was just really unfortunate with the punctures he had here. Without the punctures, could he have won? I think there's a fair chance. But I do feel with even with the punctures, he's probably going to go away from this rally fairly happy but he still needs to beat Neuville he's still down in the championship against Neuville it's going to be interesting so he needs to be single-minded think about himself be a tiny bit selfish and I think potentially potentially we could have a world champion on the cards so from one Toyota driver that was very good to an, a solid result to yeah um he did struggle in Poland we all know he's fast but he has showed tenacity this year, like in, for example, in Sweden. He's bounced back from his mistakes and from adversity. He's shown a good pace that can compete for podium positions, and he has enough pace in some rallies to win the race. However, the Katsuta that showed up to potentially win a rally was not here. It was almost like he was body snatched. There was just not... I mean, I mean, even Dirtfish is saying, what, there are too many troughs and not enough peaks. So a really disappointing rally. He's going to go away from this event. I, I think re and he needs going to need, Tackett is going to need some soul searching going into the next rally because he surely cannot have another rally like this. And you, you've got to start to wonder, I like this guy. I think he can win a rally. If this time next year, we're still saying the same things about Taka, you start to wonder whether Toyota have, because they, they obviously, Toyota, Japan, they want their Japanese driver. I, I start to wonder whether there will be a new Japanese driver in the works to take his place for maybe 2026, if we're still having this conversation, the same conversations about Taka next year. I think it's all right at the moment, but he needs to improve, and he needs to, this guy needs to improve quick. So, yeah. So, from Taka to Mr. Neuville, Tari Neuville, the world championship leader, he... Dervish has, has come out and said that he's lacked the same conviction that he has shown in recent events. And I think that's kind of fair. There was nothing inspired from him this weekend. He, yes, he normally is first on the road. But then that first on the road turns to an adrenaline rush, turns to inspiration, turns to, oh my gosh, how can he still be this fast? He um, There was a lot of talk, supposedly, about engine mapping as well in the Hyundai. So maybe the engine was a tiny bit off. Maybe his, you know... It wasn't, it wasn't a solid result for him. He still is the driver, I think, with the momentum. He's still the driver um, in control, I think, of the, champ of the championship. I think a lot of that depends on how well Evans will do over the next, over the next few rallies. He is first on the road, but as I said, um, that really doesn't seem to be too much of a handicap for him, which is a really good thing. But his gap at the head of the championship has been reduced somewhat. And <sighs> Dirtfish is saying he did not look like the intimidating, all-conquering fighting force that he was on previous events which i think is a massive exclamation mark and that's a massive thing so yeah i think a bit worrying but we have the next race uh you're only as good as your last rally when he wins the next one we're going to completely forget about it um this guy here the man that had was under pressure at the beginning of the year so did he even turn, did he even turn up to this rally yeah he was remarkably quick on the shakedown he was looking really he was looking really good and then, unfortunately, he hit a deer. Oh, dear. Uh, nothing you can do, really. Nothing you can do at all. Maybe he had the pace to win. We'll never know. Um, yeah. I, I'm trying not to say oh, dear again. But there, but I don't know what, I don't know what more you need. Um, Neuville. I wonder who Neuville, Neuville is more concerned about. Tanak or Evans? Who is going to be faster? Um, I don't think she's suggesting that they're going to be there. If they were Neuville, they'd be more concerned about Tannock as he's very, very good. They use very squared. And this week he's getting a run out of a rally one card during Estonia. Very useful preparation for Latvia, they're saying. So, yeah, but I think uh, I think Tannock is going to come back at the next rally. So next up, we have Andreas Mikkelsen. Um, and he did, I mean, they've said that he answered a lot of questions in Poland. It was a really good performance. It was pretty, he was pretty woeful on the tarmac in that car. And questions were being asked about a decision to bring him back to Hyundai and a decision to run him on more tarmac events than on gravel. He shows up in Poland where, as we know, he has won in the past. He's performed pretty well. Um, he still has 
an enormous amount of ability. He made the most of his road position on Friday and he consolidated and kept the pressure on Calais, which is, to be fair, all that the team could ask. Had he not had that unfortunate incident with, uh, well, he went to the bank, didn't he, Budumch, on Sunday morning, who knows what could have happened. He may have put some pressure on Calais for the win, but he did. I think he he did he did he did a good job. Um, other than that, whoops, and lazy. He looked really good, and he proved a point this weekend. And he did, I think, answered a lot of his detractors' questions. So yeah, fair play for Mr. Mickelson. Onwards to, but I keep saying it, the most improved driver of the year so far. So it was a podium, but I think it was a podium when you look at the rally where he he deserved it. He finished third. He finished third. He finished you know finished the rally. But it was one of those podiums where I feel the sea parted for him. He was very quick. He was very consistent. And the and the good thing about Formo is, um, throughout the, a lot of a lot of this year, he doesn't really make many mistakes or many big mistakes, which I think is really good. And that's something maybe the Toyota drivers and some of the high lights could could look out for. Um, and. If he keeps on, if he keeps improving, and Ford trust and Ford believe in Formo and M Sport a bit more, they could be, they could be, they could be champions if just the investment was there. He is, you know, he's looking really good this year, uh, and it wouldn't surprise me if I think he might need a tiny bit of luck. For example, Tanner hitting a deer is bad luck, but something like that. It, you know, a couple of people to make a mistake, or just one. And I think he has the potential to win a rally this year. And that would be absolutely amazing. So, yeah, fantastic Formo. So, we go from fantastic Formo. I'm trying to, I'm trying, I'm trying to find where he is. Where is Where is he? Okay, let's, let's move him down here. We've got fantastic Formo to, drum roll please, sublime superstar Martin Sesk. Marvellous Martin in the Ford Puma, top notch, top quality. Dervish is saying, remarkable. They said, remarkable patience, remarkable perseverance. He stuck at it. He found the level of performance where you'd almost thought was impossible from someone driving what is a Rally One car for the first time. And for me, this has come completely out of the blue. As we know, he has been around a couple of years. He has his name on that ERC timesheet. He has done Poland in the ERC. He has been at the top of the ERC timesheet. And you start to, you have to start to wonder: Is ERC a better talent pool, a better place for the Rally One cars to go for their drivers? Um, I mean, you got your Solbergs. Solberg was at the last event also in ERC. Is it? I mean, that's what's really interesting. But you've got to say, in terms of junior drivers who've made a breakthrough the last few years. Um, few, I think, would have done as good as Martin Sesks. He learned he was he looked mature out there. He didn't just go in and uh, get the mileage. I mean, he was up there and without the hybrid. Remember that he had no hybrid. As the era kicked in at different speeds, the car though started would have started handling different differently from him, and I think he had, would have adapted to that really, really well. It was a joy to watch. You saw that fantastic interview as well. It was absolutely amazing. His potential, uh, he is a potential world champion. I know we're just basing it on one event. I say potential. Maybe that will change come Latvia, where he is going to have a full Rally One hybrid car. But I think he is a much-needed story in what is a fairly lackluster, let's be fair, Rally 1 division, WRC at the moment. So the fact that Martin Sesk has uh, woke people up, I think, uh, and made Rally quite exciting going into Latvia, knowing he's going to have the same machinery. Who is, is going to come out on top? Him, Gregor Monster, Adrian Formo, and then you've got Willie be able to have a go at the Toyotas and the Hyundais. Could he even get on the podium? Could he win? I don't think anything is potentially off, you know, anything is on the table. It is rally. And if you remember, the, you know, not this rally, the last rally, OJ, you know, OJ lost by 0.2 seconds and no one really saw that coming. Um, it was going to be that close. But there we go. So we've gone from Mr. Sesks to, I think, one of the last guys we're going to be talking about in rally one. And it's Gregor Monster. He did finish fifth in Sardinia, which was his best finish in the championship. He was uh, seventh in Poland. Um... But even Dervish is just suggesting this was his best performance. He showed some real pace, and importantly, he showed that he can listen, they said, and combine pace with performance and consistency. They're being really kind about him. Um, yes, he's improving. He's just not... I mean, Sesk has blown him away. I'm sorry. 
I know money is an object, um, and people, you know, get sponsors and pay for their drives. But you imagine you're the head of the, you're the head of M Sport Ford. Surely you want to get Ford on board and get you know and look at getting Martin in the car. Not necessarily a pricing Gregor Monster, but maybe get him into a third car. Yes, it all comes down to money, but this guy is young. He's exciting. Um, as I said, and we're, we're, you know, I mean, even Dirk was just saying, yeah, it was, you know, a solid, a solid show, finishing seventh when you, the young guy completely trounced him. Uh, and he's never driven a rally one car and he wasn't in the hybrid. So, yeah. Uh, solid, I think, is the, the the nicest you can be about, 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 Mon, about, Mon, about Mon, Gregor Monster. Monster, sorry. Solid. Solid. Yeah. So, that pretty much does it for our w for our wrc winners and losers looking at the rally poland we'll probably have a couple of new stories coming in this week again until we get to obviously no doubt the next the next rally so i just wanted to say if you made it to the end you are amazing if you made it to the end and you subscribe you are a rally champion and are a multiple rally champion but just watching it for you know for me is absolutely fantastic i love rally the channel's coming on really well and we will speak to you soon. And congratulations to both Callie Rovenpera and Martin Sesks.